no country that is an island unto, its, unto itself. Nigeria is not an exception. Uh, we are also forging partnership with all countries around the world. Nigeria's vast investment potential showcased as second Indonesia Africa Forum holds in Bali, Indonesia. Political parties propose amendment to electoral act target one day for general elections. This is the beauty of legislative democracy. The will of the people is sacrosanct. And all your state receives CNG buses from federal government. Every element of a mission that is reduced from day to day activity is a plus for our health. Hello, it's always a pleasure to have you join the Network News on NTA. I'm Nija Atutijani. Joining me tonight on business is Musa Abubakar. And we have an expert on disaster risk management also tonight. That is Dr. Daniel Budi. Thank you for joining us. Remember that this broadcast is always being streamed live on our website, nt.live. Don't be afraid of missing any time. As always, at the on our YouTube channel, NTA News. Do follow us across social media. President Kashim Chetima says President Bola Tinubu is worried about Nigeria's security situation is not taking it lightly, calling for freedom and collective effort to address the insecurity in West Africa Sahel region. House Respondent Abdurrahman Jibrila reports that the Vice President stated this to an audience with the leadership of the news agency of at the presidential villa ahead of the upcoming man international lecture on the health security. Vice President Tima expressed optimism about potential outcomes of the conference, believing it will come up with lots of perspectives on how to address insecurity. Commending the NAN, NAN's crucial role in Nigeria's media landscape, the Vice President said it would help to bridge the information gap and shape public discussion on national issues. The Managing Director of the agency, Ali Muhammad Ali, disclosed the theme of the conference as Insecurity in the Sahel, 2008-2024, to 2024, Dissecting Nigeria's Challenges, Genesis, Impacts and Options. The MD announced that the lead speaker at the lecture, billed for September 25, 2024, is Mohamed Ibn Chambat, former chairperson of the ECOWAS Commission. The conference is part of NAN's efforts to expand its role beyond news dissemination and to actively contribute to national discourse and problem solving. Ali also revealed that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is set to sign a memorandum of understanding with China Xinhua News Agency during his current visit to China to further expand NAN's international partnerships. Meanwhile, political parties in Nigeria are proposing an amendment in the Electoral Act and Constitution for the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to take over the conduct of local government elections and for all general elections to hold on a single day. This formed part of 35 proposals presented by members of the Inter-Party Advisory Council at an interactive session with the National Assembly Joint Committee on Electoral Matters. John Yaku reports. IPAC is also seeking amendments on the regulation of campaign finances, electronic transmission of election results, penalty for Electoral Act violators, election electoral umpire leadership rather than appointment among other areas to improve on the process. A single day election will reduce cost, minimize disruption to economic and academic activities, maintain voters' enthusiasm throughout the process. This is the beauty of legislative democracy. The will of the people is sacrosanct. Citizen participation through elections in the, is the foundation for any democracy. We do not improve on implementation of electoral act for the next elections. Our country's democracy could be severely challenged. 
17 out of 18 political parties adopted the position of IPAC as they presented their memoranda. A petitioner or even a respondent may require expert evidence, which will be a product of inspection of electoral documents and which may occur post-21 this uh, period. I make staff, especially those who are at the polling units where votes are cast, where cameras like the police in the U.S. and other countries, you know, do. In the Committee of Mission, we should avoid the situation where we make ourselves a mockery uh, of technology disposition. The last election, the MDA election, you know, we voted um, electronically and um, it came out well. The Joint Committee is expected to meet other stakeholders before presenting its report for consideration on the amendment of the 2022 Electoral Act. John Yaku, NTA News. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has made a global commitment to ensure that Nigeria's ongoing reforms are in solidarity with other nations to revive and strengthen multilateral cooperation. The president was a delegate at the high-level forum on a multi-stakeholder partnership and the second Indonesia-Africa forum in Bali, Indonesia. Saluhu Guanara has the details. President Joko Widodo of the Republic of Indonesia received the African leaders in Bali, the commercial center of Indonesia. For the president, who has barely a month in office, the Indonesian African Forum with a commitment to addressing common global challenges of economic shutdown, unemployment, inflation, and regional political tensions. This is another platform to reawakening the 69-year vision of the Asian-African Conference. As a giant in the African continent, President Bola Tinubu, who is the chairman of ECOWAS, in a message updated the forum about his efforts in championing initiatives to boost regional trade, enhance infrastructure, and promoting political stability across West Africa. Uh, there's no country that is an island unto, its, unto itself. Nigeria is not an exception. Uh, we are also forging partnership with all countries around the world, especially uh, with the Asian countries, uh, Indonesia particularly. Uh, we are coming here to bring the experiences of Nigeria, what we are going through in terms of uh, economic prosperity, in terms of the challenges that we also face. And we are also taking the experience of other nations, especially Indonesia here, to see us to also uh, grow economically, but also to provide peace and security for the entire world. Uh, like President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has always said consistently, Nigeria is open for business. Nigeria is also a, an important partner uh, in the global affairs. And therefore, uh, as a leading African country, Nigeria will always take its place to ensure that our country remains prosperous. With only six years left until 2030 and uh, only 17% of sustainable development goals achieved, the forum deliberated on a new direction and strategy to make sustainable development goals achievement the main focus of global and regional development priorities, including the African Agenda 2063. Nigeria is a leading uh, country in Africa, and therefore uh, whatever we do towards uh, Agenda 2063, Nigeria will play a key role in, in agriculture, in mining, uh, in digital technology, and all other sectors that will ensure that Nigeria uh, becomes uh, a bigger and more prosperous nation, just as Africa also uh, would. The forum featured bilateral engagements in Bali, Indonesia, Salio Guanara, NTA News. And still talking sustainable development goals, disaster risk reduction considered a major strategy which, if mainstreamed and downscaled to all parts of the country, would greatly reduce disaster casualties recorded yearly. This is what experts are saying at a three-day workshop on Early Warning for All, a draft of Country Situational Analysis Report for 2023 to 2030 and 2024 to 2027. Yasu Yakubu reports. Disaster risk reduction and early warning is an integrated system of hazard monitoring, forecasting and prediction, disaster risk assessment, 
communication, as well as preparedness and processes which enables individuals to take timely action of hazardous event. This workshop organized by the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, in collaboration with World Meteorological Organization and United Nations Development Program for Save Resilience Project is key to addressing the ugly trend. It is on record that the current escalation of disaster events in form of conflicts, banditry, and annual floods, coupled with extreme weather events, have triggered the compelling desire to develop the DRR strategy and action plan for Nigeria. An early warning is only effective if it reaches all those at risk. If we use data, the problem of disaster risk is almost almost, almost solved. The United Nations General Assembly introduced disaster risk reduction in 2015 with the sole aim of reducing hazards of disasters across the world. In Abuja, Ilias Yakubu, NTA News. Now joining us in the studio to discuss some of the issues raised in the report is the Director, Disaster Risk Reduction, National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Dr. Daniel Obot. Thank you for joining us, Doctor. Sorry I called you Oboti the first time around. Thank you for having me here for this uh, discourse. Now, Doctor, what are the key components of flood risk management and reduction in handling emergencies? Let's begin with that. What we do in disaster risk management is that we have what we call hazard profiling, hazard mapping, hazard assessments, and when these are done, they relate to locations. And these hazards are potential threats that will culminate into disasters when they are being triggered by certain conditions. Then concerning flood in Nigeria, the disaster reduction measures and strategies lie on downscaling of early warning messages as received from NIMET. First of all, NIMET is Nigeria Meteorological Agency that will give information focus on the pattern of rainfall in our country. Certain locations will be predicted to have high amount of rainfall Others will be predicted to have low amount of rainfall. From these forecasts by NIMET, Nigeria Hydraulic Services Agency, the Federal Government of Nigeria statutory institution, saddled with the responsibility of giving annual flood outlook, will further using the seasonal rainfall pattern earlier forecasted by NIMET to give outlook on the flood situation in our country. There are certain areas that will be predicted or listed in the flood outlook by NISTA that some of these areas, all government areas of states, will experience serious flood so and the the, now that you've mentioned that with this prediction, you work together with these other bodies to predict. Now, how does urbanization and deforestation contribute to increased flood risk? Do they play a factor? Yes, yes. Ah. In respect of urbanization, which is a major issue in flood uh, pattern in Nigeria, building without complying with building codes, town planning laws, and when people have moved from their local uh, communities to urban areas with high population, settlements will be raised on areas that should not. There will be non-compliance with town planning laws, building codes will not be taken into consideration. 
with this encroachment on natural water flow path, these parts will be blocked and prevent free flow of water. The urbanization is a major issue. Then when we are talking about deforestation, the natural vegetation cover is being removed by cutting of trees for firewood and building activities, by cutting of trees for farming, by cutting of trees for other economic activities, leaving the soil bare to be exposed to rainfall. And this will give the rainfall strength to wash away the surface of the soil. There will be no activities, no vegetation to protect the amount of rainfall that will be received on the earth surface. Then the so what will be, how does your agency incorporate preparedness, mitigation, and response strategies to, in your early warning systems for it to be effectively implemented in these flood-prone areas? In, uh, preparedness, what we do is that, for instance, this particular year, 2024, we carried out what we call downscaling of early warning alerts because disaster management is not limited to the national headquarters. We take it to the states. We take it to the local government areas. In that preparedness, we inform the state. We educate the communities what should be the strategies, the measures, the actions that should be undertaken to avert the flood situations and to reduce the adverse impacts of flooding to economic activities, to communities, to life pattern, to health. We realize that this particular year, there is ongoing cholera outbreak. And this cannot be differentiated or cut off from the impact of flooding because some drainages were blocked, waters could not flow, and it, it, made, it, it, it was a, a ground for maybe in areas that we have uh, broken pipes, these kind of situations affect, pollute drinking waters. And in some of these places, the flood water that has been going with the sediments flow into flow streams, streams that, are, that are being used by the, their cooking and domestic uses. All right, Doctor. So it's very important for people to be aware of these issues and, of course, comply with some of the things that uh, some of the awareness protocols that NEPA, NEMA has been giving out periodically. I want to thank you very much for joining us and sharing, giving insight into this issue. I've been speaking with Dr. Daniel Obot, of the Director of Disaster Risk Management at NEMA. Thank you, Doctor. For having me here. Thank you very much. Still on flood, nine local governments, nine local government areas la rather, located in the northern part of UB state have been cut off from Damaturu following torrential rainfall, which has led to the collapse of a bridge in Chubam under Basari local government area. Yunus Suleiman reports that Governor May Malabuni was there to sympathize with the people and give hope. Residents of nine local government areas in northern Yobi have been plunged into a difficult situation following the collapse of two critical bridges in Jumbum and Jakusko, which connected them to Dematru, the state capital. The bridges were swept away by flood water, triggered by two days of heavy rainfall, leaving the communities stranded. This prompted Governor May Malabuni, represented by the state deputy governor E.D. Badogubana, to conduct an on the spot assessment to determine the extent of the damage. As suggested by the advisor political, that there should be a standard bridge here where it may enable the water to pass without cutting off the roads. And it will also avoid the continuous flooding of farmlands and houses in Jumbam and its environments. The governor has directed the State Ministry of Works to provide temporary measures 
to enable the affected population to access the state capital as a matter of urgency. Reports indicated that six lives were lost as a result of the collapse of Jumbon Bridge. In the Matru, Yunusa Suleiman, NTA News. The federal government through the Northeast Development Commission is to collaborate with Taraba State Government to ensure speedy reconstruction of the collapsed Namne Bridge in Taraba State. The managing director, Mohamed Goni Al-Ali, stated this while inspecting the bridge on the Jalingokari Road. Bem Hanya reports. The management of the Northeast Development Commission, NEDC, led by its managing director, Mohamed Goni Alkali is on an inspection tour of its projects across Taraba State. Receiving the team in his office in Jalingo, the State Deputy Governor Aminu Abdullahi Alkali seeks the Commission's intervention in the collapsed Namne and Mayokan bridges on Jalingo Wukari and Jalingo Bailey Federal Highways that link the northern and southern parts of Nigeria. Bridges that link the north and south of this country uh, were washed away by the flood. And we know, at least, we believe that your commission will do something to alleviate the suffering of our commuters. The managing director, who led the management of the NEDC to the Namne Bridge, attributes the phenomenon to climate change and assures of the commission's swift intervention. We have to sit down, look at it comprehensively, and provide solutions that will be durable, not immediately but for the future. The team also inspected the ongoing construction of Institute of Entrepreneurship, solar-powered borehole and solar-powered lights at the Taraba State University, 100 housing units at the State College of Education, and renovation of male and female wards at the General Hospital Zinc. In Jalingo, Bem Hanya. NTA News. And from Jalingo, we head to Gusau, where the state government has donated 100 million naira and 10,000 bags of grain to victims of re the recent flooding in Gumi local government area of the state. Governor Dauda Lawal announced the donations while on a sympathy visit to affected communities, also unveiling the state government's plan to resettle the victims. Jamilu Ibrahim has more. Sand flooding in Gumi local government area of Zamfara state which submerged thousands of houses, farmlands and livestock has resulted in massive displacement of households, a situation requiring urgent intervention of the relevant authorities. After receiving reports from various committees immediately deployed by the state government to commiserate with the victims and assess the situation for appropriate action, Governor Doda Lowell is now at the ravaged communities to see things for himself. The Emir of Gomez Palace was the governor's first point of call, where he sympathized with the Emirate over the sad event and announced the state government's donations of 100 million naira and 10,000 bags of assorted grains to the victims. This is in addition to the allocation of a plot of land away from the danger zone to each of the household that lost their shelters to the flood. The Emir of Gumi, Justice Lal Hassan, retired, who said more than 10,200 households have lost their houses to the flood, uploaded the governor for his concern to the plight of the victims. The governor was also in Gary district, which appears to be the community who was hit by the disaster, where he assured them of the government's commitment to taking proactive measures. We are also going to build drainages as well as try to make sure we work on the dams and if possible provide additional dams. That will take care of this Members of the community were obviously pacified by the governor's visit and they came out in their large number to accord him a rousing welcome. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. Coming up, Nigeria's creative economy eyes $100 billion revenue annually and 2 million new jobs by 2030. As federal government prosecutes illegal minors, details are more in a moment. Yeah, just in time for news of appointments, President Bola Tinubu has approved the appointment of Dr. Mansur Motar as Chairman Bank of Industry and Dr. Olashukbo Unusi as Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of the bank. Ifoma Uzopala, Shekarao Omar, Hussein F. Young, Mabel Ndagi, Rotimi Akinde, Makeup Executive Directors. Also, Tajuddin Dati Ahmed, Adida Mola Ulufemi Young, Reverend Isaac Adifemi Agui, 
Malam Muhammad Bala, make up non executive directors while Ore Uluwa Adeyemi, Suleiman Musak Adira to, uh, to serve as independent non executive directors. Dr. Mutar's career spans decades in finance, international development, public service, and academics. He served as Minister of Finance, Budget, and Economic Development from 2008 to 2010 and was Vice President Operations of the Islamic Development Bank before his recent appointment. The President expects the new board to work harmoniously and diligently with utmost fidelity to the nation in driving the mandate of this critical institution as a development vehicle to provide support for projects which enhance job creation poverty alleviation and improve the socio-economic condition of Nigerian families. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu extends warm congratulations to Vice President Kashim Shetima on his 58th birthday. Vice President Shetima is an academic, accomplished banking professional, raconteur and leader. He was the governor of Borno State from 2011 to 2019 and senator representing Borno Central from 2019 to 2023. President Tinubu joins family, friends and members of the executive arm of government to celebrate the quintessential administrator, orator and bibliophile on his special day. The president commends Vice President Shetima for the enthusiasm vigor and affability he brings to government, governance rather, and thanks the Vice President for his support, wishing him robust health and renewed strength in his service to the nation. Similarly, President of the Senate, Godswill Akpabio, felicitates with Vice President Kashim Shatima on his 58th birthday, describing him as a committed Democrat and supportive Vice President who has contributed immensely to the stability of the polity. Senator Akpabio says Vice President Shatima's vision for Nigeria and his extensive experience have been vital in guiding federal government policies and initiatives. Similarly, Speaker House of Representatives Tajuddin Abbas has praised Vice President Kashim Shatima as a dependable ally to President Tinubu and a stabilizing factor in the APC-led administration. Speaker Abbas says Nigeria needs more public servants like him and wishes VP Vice President Shatima more years of service to the country in sound health. Also felicitating with the Vice President, Deputy Speaker House of Representatives Benjamin Kalu describes the Vice President as a patriot who has made invaluable contributions to Nigeria's development. Security matters next. The Federal High Court Abuja has fixed 11th September 2024 for ruling on bail application filed by 10 protesters against their continued remand in police custody. The 10 defendants in the matter were arraigned by police for their alleged involvement in conspiracy, treasonable felony, incitement against public peace and destruction of public property. Opposing a motion filed by defense counsel for their based on presumption of innocence, prosecution counsel Simon said, Simon Lau said grievous allegations had been made against them and there were no exceptional circumstances to warrant bail at this to warrant bail at this time. The Nigeria police also activated Interpol tools and other global policing networks to support ongoing domestic investigations aimed at locating and apprehending a foreign national plotting to undermine the democratically elected government in Nigeria through unconstitutional regime change and orchestrating violence across the country during the nationwide protest. At a media briefing in Abuja, the force gave the assurance that it would spare no effort in bringing to justice any individual or group threatening national security and the governance process. He mobilized and deployed several billions of Naira to his Nigerian collaborators, urging them to mobilize the public to violently storm police facilities and military barracks 
anticipating but that will instigate international condemnation of the Nigerian government. These acts are in clear violation of the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2011 and other laws of this country. Invitation extended to NLC. The force says it is strictly to some individuals within the NLC leadership to get details of the relationship between the foreign national and that the force is in which the force who the force is investigating rather, and the labor union as the suspect owns a business center within the building. Similarly, the force is seeking the support and cooperation of Nigerians with information which will lead to the arrest of the suspects at large. Meanwhile, the federal government has charged suspected illegal miners arrested in Kogi and Ondo states during a recent operation led by the mining marshals to court. The operation took place in Angpa local government area Kogi state, resulting in the arrest of two Chinese nationals and a Nigerian in activities which are in violation of existing mining regulations. The mining marshals also raided an illegal gold mining site in Odibo, LG, local government area of Undo State, where four suspects were arrested. These individuals caught in the act of illegally mining gold in a government reserved area confessed during interrogation that they lacked the necessary license to carry out their operations. The suspects from both Kogi and Ondo states have since been charged to the Federal High Court, Abuja. Meanwhile, to ensure reduction in the cost of transportation, the federal government has donated 20 CNG buses to Oyo State. Lukman Hassan reports that the buses will be used both within and outside Oyo State. CNG initiative introduced by President Bola Tinubu last year after removing petroleum subsidy is to Nigerians enjoying low transportation fare nationwide. The chief executive officer of Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative, Michael Oluagbemi, noted that the donation is a promise kept by the President Tinubu Ned administration. About making it sustainable, about uh, also ensuring that we are good custodians of the assets that we're given, and also ensure that the jobs that were created in manufacturing these buses can continue to be created. And in also ensuring that more buses are rolled out so that more people can enjoy the benefit. Receiving the buses, the Oyo State Pay Center Transportation Service said this will go a long way in reducing the cost of transportation within and outside Oyo State. Yes, we know it's sustainable because most countries outside the world have been using it and it's sustainable and we're going to try it out here and if it's yes, we're going to convert all our buses as well. We also have a safer environment because every element of emission that is reduced from our day-to-day -day activity because for our health. It is believed that this initiative will reduce cost of vehicle maintenance in Ibada. Lukman Hassan, NTA News. And a report just reaching our news desk indicates that the mother of late president, former president Omar Musa Eradua has just passed on. We'll bring you the details in subsequent bulletins. And now it's time to join our Lagos Network Center for more reports. I have been urged to invest in Nigeria by taking advantage of abundant human and natural resources in the country. This came to fore as a forum in Lagos aimed at showcasing business-friendly opportunities in the country to investors. Bola Jiakim completes the story. A population of over 200 million people, Nigeria is endowed with enormous natural and human resources waiting to be explored. The country is one of the largest economies in Africa and in the global landscape. These and many other opportunities that are bound for investors were presented at this forum. While calling on investors to take advantage of huge potentials in Lagos, Governor Babajide Sonwolu assured that its administration will collaborate with those willing to partner the government in infrastructure development of the state. We're building the largest logistics food security hub in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa. We see and we realize that we need to feed the over 20 million population that we have. And we say to ourselves that one of the ways to secure the tomorrow 
is to make sure that food security, which is one of the major security challenges that we have in the world, Lagos can build a logistics hub that can keep almost 90 to 120 days of supply. With federal government introduction of various incentives to boost investment in marine and blue economy, the minister said more business opportunities are now open for investors in the sector, as this has also positioned Africa as a critical player in the global economy. The federal government is actively encouraging investment in capital intensive ventures, such as in the expansion of the domestic shipping fleet and private sector led maritime development zones. The forum provides unique opportunity to explore new avenues for investment and strengthen the trade ties between Nigeria and our foreign allies. In Lagos, Bolaji Akim, NTA News. Promoting Nigerian culinary culture is a priority for Onga Seasoning Cube made by Promacido. The company is out to reward its customers with Onga Taste the Millions promo rolled out to assure its customers that Mama's Helping Hand will not only assist in the kitchen but in the family's budget. Langre Bele, who was press briefing to launch the promo, has this details. Counting hunger, a seasoning that enables families to savor delicious delicacies, was launched into the Nigerian market in the powdery form. Ten years into its launch, hunger was transformed into a cube format. And to mark this anniversary, Promacido decides to roll out customer's reward program to the tune of 250 million naira worth of cash and prizes to lucky winners. How does one win? head of marketing department of the company explains to win all you have to do is buy either one pack of the hunger by 90 beef or chicken or you buy two packs of the hunger chicken or beef by 50 cubes and then take your empty wrappers to the redemption center nearest to you they would give you a scratch card when you get the scratch card you scratch the panel and then you text the code to 1393 once you've done that, you've automatically entered into a draw. Promacida said is a means to express their gratitude to its committed consumers who have kept faith with the company. This uh, promotion is a very good occasion for us to show how uh, grateful the uh, consumer has been with, with uh, Onga. And that's our way of giving back to the consumer. Unique items that will also be won in the course of this promo. There will be Richard cards also to be won, and also a lot of uh, other prizes will come in form of money, in form of cash. The promo is targeting about 250,000 Nigerians to enjoy cash gifts and other giveaways. Promo starts 1st of September, running through to 1st of October, with the first electronic draw coming up on the 13th of this month. Onga seasoning powder is available in a range of delicious flavors. In Lagos, Larry Bilayi is. Time now for some messages. The news will be back shortly. You're just in time for financial news and the Central Bank of Nigeria has prayed the Federal High Court to order Binance Holdings Limited to provide further clarification on the documents it is requesting from the Apex Bank to pursue its defense. Binance Holdings is facing trial for alleged money laundering and tax evasion to the tune of 35 million US dollars. The cryptocurrency company is one of several designated non-financial institutions fingered by the EFCC as being complicit in manipulating the financial system through money laundering. At Monday's proceedings, EFCC counsel Ikili Ehena Cho argued that although the governor or his representative has been subpoenaed, more time is required to respond to the defendant's request. The head of Binance, Tigran Gambarian, has been in correctional custody over the allegations and is seeking to be granted bail, citing ill health as reason for the motion. The matter has been adjourned to September 4, 2024. And still, and for more business news, here is Musa Abubakar. Musa. Thank you, Daja.
Angote Refinery has commenced processing of premium motor spirit. A development observers say has the potential to transform the global market for fuel. Meanwhile, oil prices stabilized on Monday as Libyan oil exports remain halted and following losses at the end of last week on expectations of higher OPEC plus production from October and signs of sluggish Chinese and U.S. demand. Brent were down six cents, so 0.08 percent at 76 dollars 87 cents a barrel. While U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude aged up eight cents, so 0.11 percent to 73 dollars 63 cents on Monday, marking a public holiday in the U.S. market. The equities market. Begin the first weekday of trading on a bullish note as investors gain 123.45 billion naira. At the end of the first weekday of trading on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, a total of 498 million shares in 13,140 corresponding to a market value of 11.036 billion naira were traded. Today's market activity shows a 13% decrease decline in volume, 65% decline in turnover, but 3% improvement in deals. Equity capitalization increased to 55.6 trillion naira. United Bank for Africa recorded the highest volume of 54.8 million traded shares, followed by Zenit Bank, Owando and Access Holdings. It's now time to pause for more messages. The news continues after the break. Live sports action with Badi Adele comes up in the next few seconds. Badi. Many thanks, Najatu. And of course, there's good news for Nigeria. So let's begin with the Paralympic Games. As Nigeria's Enola Mariam Bolaji earlier today became the first African athlete to win a medal at the Para Badminton at the Paralympic Games after winning a bronze medal for Team Nigeria in the women's singles LCL3. Bolaji defeated a Ukrainian opponent, Oksana Kozina, in straight sets. Two nil attended, the first set 21-9 and the second 21-9, winning Nigeria's first Paralympics medal in Paris. Let's return home now, as major cities in Nigeria are set for more grassroots talent zones, as Arise Football Academy continues to discover footballers to set of national teams in the country. At the Tof Arena in Abuja, one of the key events in the north central region of the country where the academy scouted players were engaged and make battle across under 13, under 15, and under 17 categories. The, the system of, of the whole uh, process of the football development is to catch them young. And we have always said it that there are a lot of talent in the country. I've told people that Nigeria can win the World Cup, but we must find a pathway through education, through football, then through structure of proper football development. Now, heroes of football in the country have been assured of improved welfare for their contributions to the development of the sports in the country. This is coming from the Nigeria Football Federation, who gave reassurance at an event where they acknowledged the roles of upcoming serving and retired officials in Abuja. There is a need for us to bring in all those who have served the Nigeria Football Federation and celebrate them. And that was how it started, a committee was formed, and uh, it, that was what translated into what we are seeing today. NFF has also adopted an anti-corruption strategy with an awareness work which spanned over five kilometers in the federal capital territory. All right, that's pause for now. Let's return to Niger too. Thank you, Badi. The family of Avayedun Dola Dominic announces funeral arrangements for the burial of their matriarch, Mrs. Comfort, Avayedun Dola Dominic. 
Commendation Mass takes place Monday, 23rd September 2024 in Wari, Delta State. Wake Keep comes up on Thursday, 26 September 2024. Requiem Mass, Interment and Reception hold on Friday, 27th September 2024 in Igara Edo State. Madam Comfort Avaedun Dola Dominic is survived by children and grandchildren, including Dr. Reme Udusong, a consultant, pediatrician, and Ozavivi Winful, a director at the Federal Inland Revenue Service. On that note, we conclude the network news on NTA. Thank you for staying with us to the end of the bulletin.